Hey YouTube, this is Eddie from E11 World and today I have another exciting tutorial on Photoshop secrets, tips and tricks that you can use to improve your workflow, speed up Photoshop and just get all better while you're working with this program. I have the latest version of Adobe CC and I'll be showing you on my Windows machine right now, uh, Windows 8. Anytime I mention the Alt key, that means option on Mac. So for Mac users, there's your tip. A bit of a background, um, I've been using Photoshop for about seven or eight years now. I use it every day in my workflow. All right, so let's get started here. First, I'd like to show you some of the workflow tips here. You can get to the preferences and I always believe that you should change the default because everyone's different and you know, I always want to change this. So let's get started. Uh, to get to the dialog box here, I uh, just double clicked on here. Um, and that gets me the preferences. Uh, now I know you start on the units and rollers if you can if you want to change that. Right clicking gives you this. You can also get to it from here, edit and preferences. Um, and this is a shortcut, control K. So let's start with that. First, I'd like to change a few things here. One of them is take this off. This is usually tick by default. If it is if it's not, then it's good, already done. But I believe it is usually. So just untick that. I think it speeds up the workflow when you don't have to press another key to get to your tools. All right, let's get to the second one here. I put this setting here to always. Another one that you don't have to click again and just saves you another click and believe me, it adds up. All right, I'd like to show you my preferences here for performance and this goes for my machine. This is where your machine might be different. I'm using an Nvidia Quadro 4000 card. It's a very powerful card and um, you know, I, it speeds up a lot of my workflow, especially when doing video. So these are my settings for this, and I have about 32 gigs of RAM in my machine. So you can see here, I've got an SSD, there's a 256, and that's how much free. So that's kind of the quick overview of my settings and the preferences. Now, let's get started on the other stuff. Now, you always get this background layer when you start any new document. Actually, in fact, let's just do that right now. I'll show you a couple of things. So Control N, you get to this, and you can get to it from File and then New. So a few things here. You can customize your presets. So any settings that you change here, and I believe in the newest update for CC, there's a few more options you can change with the background color. I haven't actually played with that yet. And this goes right here. So you can change it to whatever color you need also. All right, so any settings that you modify here, you can save it in, as a preset right here. So I've saved a whole bunch and I use these for different tasks, you know, wallpapers, business cards, settings, anything. And these do come in handy a lot of the times. You can save the preset, name it whatever you want, include what you want. And again, so let's say I just go with this right now and you start with a blank document. And by default, this is locked. So if I press Control and Alt while double clicking this, I bypass that dialog box and I'll just undo and show you what I mean. If you just double click it, you're always going to get this box where you can rename the layer and whatnot. Some people don't want to do that right away. So we just press Alt and uh, Control. That's Option and Control on Mac to bypass that. All right, to show you where you, the files are stored uh, for the presets, this is where you get them. If you go into your uh, file directory, and this might be different, uh, it will say your username here. And uh, for CS5 or whatever, you know, you just change this and you should get you be able to get to it. And so right now, if I go into the settings, this is where I keep that. Well, actually, in fact, let me just open it. Um, so right here, these are my settings for all these um, different uh, presets and uh, new dialog box. And, uh, you know, there's a few other settings here that, you, you know, these files could be helpful for you. And if you go back, this is the presets for everything else, your actions, styles, colors, keyboard shortcuts and whatnot. And, uh, you know, to get to like the CC version, you know, you just change it again and there you go. Okay, so one thing I always find useful is let's say this layer is not centered. Let's say I have it here and uh, everything is left aligned and you'd like to center this. Now, there's a few ways to do it, you know, you can make guides and, and all these things. One way I found really helpful is let's say if this text is centered. So one thing you could do is try to eyeball it, but it's not always the best way. So if you zoom out to 100% or, you know, full view, uh, right now I have one monitor set up, so this is uh, all I can show you. P press Control A, select all, and now you can, you're, if you're on the move tool, you can move it right here. If you just press that while you're on that layer, you can center it. 
You can also left align, right align, you know, top, bottom. So I just do this, for example, absolute center. And this goes for everything else. So if I'm actually on the selection, let's say I've selected this right here and I'm on that layer, but again, using the move tool, I can center it to that. So this comes in very handy for a lot of uh, uses. I, I use this almost every day. And uh, so I'll just undo here to show you. One more way to do it is if you want, you can go to view and a new guide and just put 50% uh, in your keyboard and that that makes it go uh, especially vertical then your guide is there and you know you can turn this on and it, there it is it's aligned to center I actually turn this off um, these are kind of the defaults too I always have this on I find it helps me when I'm selecting layers and I can you know, change this to a layer instead of a group I think it's always better and I don't really want to see this all the time you know, I don't transform layers all that often, and if I do, I use shortcuts like Control T. So about zooming, uh, if you're not using the zoom, Control plus and Control minus, uh, this is to zoom in and out. Control zero zooms you to a hundred percent of the canvas size. You can also zoom in with this right here, or use your zoom tool. I don't really use this that much. I mean, if you can, if you want to double click, and now you're actually in hundred percent of the view. Um, double clicking on the hand tool gets you to 100% of the canvas. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm saying 100%, I mean full canvas size. Um, you can also, let's say if you're zoomed in or in or out too much and you can control Alt zero and now you're into 100% of the actual canvas um, or document. So these are some of the shortcuts that I use and I go into colors now. So right now if I press D, you just notice here, I switch back to the default black and white and X switches them, the foreground and background. If you're trying to select something with the eyedropper, for example, if I select this, now you can see a change here. If you hold, select and hold, now you're getting that, the eyedropper with the ring around it, and you can disable that up here. If you don't want it, you can disable that. So if you hit Alt, uh, you can see the background one right here changes. And if you just regu you know, regular click, you, you select the foreground. So Alt is for the background. And uh, if you're on the eyedropper tool, if you want to move something temporarily, just holding control will get you the move tool and you can do that. And I'll uh, hide the guide for a sec. When you're in brush or pencil, color replacement and other tools, uh, holding down the alt option on Mac allows you to temporarily access the eyedropper tool. So let's say if I'm on a brush and I have a new layer, just holding the alt will give me the eyedropper so I can select whatever layer uh, color I need and then yeah releasing it goes back to the brush or pencil other tools like i mentioned okay so filling a layer with a color now is very easy with shortcuts if you hit alt and sh backspace you're f filling with a foreground color and if you're hitting control shift and backspace you're hit, um, filling with a, back a foreground sorry background layer oh, my bad and if i'm just undoing here and going into the text layer you can do that also with text so alt shift backspace Control shift backspace very easy and very handy some other options you can get to by right clicking and you can I believe assign these also by shortcuts let's say on the text tool now let's say I want to convert it to a shape you know it's all there and if you hit a you can see what I mean now they're all shapes uh, vector basically you can take that into illustrator and change it up right now if I'm trying to change anything you can see that it's not like where I select and drag and I'm constricted into this only so uh, if I uh, just take a back out here you can change that let me see if I right click here and convert to a paragraph text and now we get those borders with the uh, you know you can change the size and, and everything it's just like a paragraph and if you want to change it back you can right click again convert to point text and now we go back to this so very interesting very handy and let's go through a few other things you can select if I'm just using my arrow keys here. So if I add control and uh, arrow keys, I'm just skipping one word at a time. If I add shift to that, I'm also selecting. Let's look at a few methods for changing text. So right now, if I'm on this layer, double clicking gives me that one letter word and triple clicking gives me the whole line. So you can do things like shift, alt, up or down, and now we're changing the baseline of the characters. If you change it to shift, alt, and left or right. Now we're changing the letter spacing between characters or kerning. And then if you changed it to control, 
Control and Alt, up or down, and now we're changing the line height uh, between the words. And if you're using the le left or right arrows, now we're changing by hundreds in the kerning, as you can see right here. All right, so these are just a few of the shortcuts. Uh, you can do things like left align, right align, and so on. Control Shift L, Control Shift C, J for justify and write, you know, R for that. So we put it back to center and uh, just a quick things I want to show you here. You can also do things like copy layer styles by double clicking. So let me see if I just want to add any layer style here. I'll add a drop shadow, maybe change the color. All right, maybe not this. So, all right. So now I've applied some, some of the styles to this layer and I'm going to drag it down. Sorry and uh, I'll enable this one here. So if I wanted to copy these styles over, I just drag with the effects uh, icon right here into this layer. But now we're actually, I'm actually moving it from that layer to this. If I would undo this and I add Alt to the mix, now you can see the arrow changes to the dual arrows, the black and white one, and now it's copied over. So that's another quick thing here. Selecting layers, so let's select both layers and uh, now we can just all these arrows back and forth here to uh, show or hide the details of the effects. So I'm actually going to just take this layer away and uh, we have this layer selected. All right. Okay, so Alt and open bracket or uh, the close bracket changes between the layers. So I'm actually just going up and down between those layers up here. And if you add shift to that, you're actually selecting whatever it goes through. So I just selected everything and be aware that it doesn't select anything that's invisible. So that's one thing you should notice. And let's say if I'm on this layer and I wanted to move it to the top. So I would actually just hit shift control and close bracket. And now it changes it, uh, moves it all, all the way up. And then uh, shift control and open bracket moves it down again. So this is one of those shortcuts that you want to be familiar with. And then changing things like, uh, so if I'm actually selected in this layer, you can see that it's blend mode is set to normal and it's at 100% opacity. So clicking the numerics on your keyboard. So five gives me 50%, eight, 80%, zero, five is 5%, zero gives you 100%. And toggling through the blend modes, shift, alt, plus or minus, And you can see now we're just changing that by going um, and you can even go as far as shift and alt and m for multiply s for screen overlay and so on so and uh, shift alt and gives you normal mode again so a few things very simple and very useful uh, final thing i'd like to show you here is uh, resizing the image and so let's say i go back to control zero so now I'm actually seeing the full canvas. Uh, if I'm doing control T, you can see that you can't really see the whole image borders or uh, I should say size. So now if I hit control uh, zero, now I can see where its boundaries are and I can resize that to whatever I want. So holding the shift keeps everything uh, uh, constrained so that you're not actually uh, rescaling the height or width uh, alone. So it does both of them at the same time. And if you're hitting control while you're doing this, now you can modify only one corner and that kind of gives you the, some of the 3D effects. Now you can't really do that with text. So if I'm control T, doing that with text that's not rasterized, it doesn't really give the same results. So let's say if I actually go and rasterize that, rasterize type, control T, and now you can see I'm able to do different things with that. Let's say I wanted to change the text to look more like the Star Wars thing. So control shift and then alt. Um, and this is dragging only one of the corner sides right there. So that gives you this and then you can scale it down to whatever you want. And there you have it. All right. So I hope you find these tips very useful. If you did, please like, subscribe and share. And I hope to see you in other videos. This is Eddie from E11 World. See you soon.